JJ the CPA here. I'm gonna take a crack at the self-employed sole proprietorship independent contractor benefits out of these acts that we've been handed. And it just seems like really with the self-employed and independent contractors sole proprietor out of the CARES Act, not intentionally or anything, but there's, it's just so vague how to determine what it is that you get um, on these three benefits. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come to you with as much information as I've got, and I would actually love it if in the comments, if you have some additional information or a resource, or maybe uh, your bank gave you a set of requirements of, you know, you're self-employed and so here's what's needed, because um, I think that's how we're gonna have to solve this. So I've got a client tomorrow that I'm having him go to one of my three banks to get the PPP and we're gonna go with what we think we need and then we'll see what happens. It'll be a good experience. So um, here's where we're at on the self-employed, the sole proprietor, the independent contractor, you know, in, in essence, you already know this if you're one of them, it's just that you don't have a separate tax return. That's really what this comes down to. It doesn't mean you don't have a real business, it just means that you don't have a separate tax return. Then, when you are self-employed, or sole proprietor, or an independent contractor, you're now preparing this information for your taxes on your personal return. You probably know this, right? So when you go to file a Form 1040, that's where you're reflecting your information as a self-employed, sole proprietor, or independent contractor. So we're talking about where, but there's, there's out of the CARES Act, okay? Uh, out of the CARES Act, there's two things that came into play, and it's this PPP, okay? Now, all of my videos have been focusing in on those companies that have wages because most of my clients, it's, they have wages. I, don't, I really don't have that many self-employed clients. Um, all my self-employeds um, watch other videos I've been doing for the last two years. You should have a separate return. You should be either an S-Corp or a partnership, but that's a, that's a discussion for another time. Point is, also I haven't had a lot of videos on this because by golly, we don't know that much. Okay, so as I know more, I'll do more videos and I look forward to that. And again, if you have some good information, please put it in the comments so that anybody else seeing that can help and then I can maybe incorporate that into a future video. So the two things that came out of the CARES Act, right, was the PPP and the self-employed sole proprietor independent contractor can actually qualify for federal unemployment, okay? And that's unprecedented. That's, that has never been the case um, where if you aren't an employee, that if you go out of work, you would be able to get unemployment. Now, here's the thing, please, uh, Amanda and I have been trying to find, and I cannot find anywhere where you apply for these federal unemployment benefits, whether you're self-employed or not. Um, the things that I'm seeing at the Department of Labor, and by the way, this is, this is April 1st, 2020, so um, if you're watching this and it's past that and there's new information out and if this gets totally obsolete, we'll just uh, pull the video down. But when I go to the Department of Labor, um, the things that it has talking about unemployment is dated before the CARES Act. So I'm not finding anything on the Department of Labor website. Um, and then anything I'm finding says go file with your state. My understanding when I'm reading through the law and then my understanding when you read how the unemployment works was that it's going to be administered by the IRS and you would apply online for it. The state, now we may find out next week when they roll it out that it's this way, but you know the state is for the state, right? And every state's different on how you qualify and when benefits start. And it even changes or from state to state in terms of who actually even pays for that. In some states, it's the employees that pay for the unemployment. In some states, it's the employers that pay for the unemployment, meaning paying into. So the federal, as I understand it, is going to be a separate pot, a separate file, uh, filing, doesn't have anything to do with the state. 
It's up to $600 a week. It lasts for up to 39 weeks. Um, so with that, that's all I have to add on the federal unemployment right now because I don't know anywhere where you go, whether you're self-employed or not. So let me know a link if you've got one. And if you have someone that's filed at the state and you feel confident that they actually are getting federal unemployment benefits through the state, I'd love to know that too, because I'm a little bit surprised this wasn't the first rollout in terms of, uh, in terms of information. Now, in terms of the self-employed, okay, and I uh, was inspired to put together this video for some good friends of mine going back, you know, probably almost since Cooper was like two years old, so 15 years. And I was talking with them today and um, based on the circumstances that they had, we were walking through some stuff and I was looking up some stuff. And so that's how I've got the latest on the federal unemployment. But when we're talking about self-employed and the sole proprietor and the independent contractor, that's the terminology that is in the CARES Act. And uh, the CARES Act, there's a copy of it on my website where you can go and read it. Um, and it's in the initial sections that it talks about it. So let's talk about the CARES Act and let's talk about uh, the PPP, okay? Because the PPP is out of the CARES Act. Now, I'm gonna to touch on this real quick. There is a EIDL, okay? Uh, which is AKA the COVID-19 disaster loan. Uh, this you get only at the SBA.gov. And I think what I'll do when I'm done with this video, I'll, pu I'll put this close um, for, you know, 30 seconds or something. You can take a screenshot of it to see uh, any of this that you'd be interested in. And then in the body, uh, anything I can, I'll put a link to it for you. <laughs> so this didn't come out of the CARES Act. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. But what I do want to talk about is this PPP. And the PPP is the payment, sorry, Paycheck Protection Program, okay? But it does apply to the self-employed, like I said. And it's the same concept, okay, right here, which is you would take, you know, what you earn annually. Let's see if I can, okay? So you would take, here's what I earn annually. You're gonna divide it by 12, because we're getting to a monthly average. And then you're gonna multiply it by 2.5, that's the factor, 2.5. And then that would equal your loan amount for the PPP, right? So what's your annual income divided by 12 times 2.5, and that would be your PPP. The big question that we haven't got any clear, uh, clarification on is, but how do we determine that starting figure, right? So if we don't know this number, then we surely are not gonna know how to get to this number. So let me, I've got some ideas on that. But again, this is your self-employed, sole proprietor, and your independent contractor. So let's, let's talk about where these numbers uh, come from, right? I mean, where would we find this number? Because in the, in the law, it kind of just throws a bucket right there and it just says for sole proprietors, self-employed, independent contractors, and it talks about the Form 1099s, it talks about self-employment income, but it says net self-employment income. So um, here's where you would try and find this number, and I would love it if somebody would maybe march into a bank and anything that you have here, say, hey, I wanna apply for the PPP, and if you go to my website, um, I've got a free co community website. You, you provide no information to me, and you don't even find any information about me, but on my website, jjthecpahelp.com, I've got the PPP app. And at the top of that app, you mark sole proprietorship, self-employed. Okay. But when we're talking about where's this number come from, it would come from one or some of these things, okay? So it'd come from Schedule C, that's on your 1040. It come from the 1099 that you receive, not, not the 1099s you send, the 1099s you received. This would be 1099 miscellaneous. 
Okay, that's a box seven. I'll come back to these. Form 1099-K, which is what you received. Now the 1099-K is for those of you that get paid by credit card. You're probably familiar with this, but the company that runs your credit cards, they send you a 1099-K, which is all the monies that you've collected. So if you don't collect payments from your customers, your clients, by credit card, you will not have a 1099-K. A 1099, okay, miscellaneous, okay, box seven, is that non-employee compensation. So typically those that are getting a 1099 have basically provided a service through their business, it's just not a separate tax return, and who paid them is going to send them, you, this Form 1099. You can also look to Schedule F, believe it or not. I mean, that's a, that's a farming business, right? Farming and ranching, that can also be self-employed income. This is all about a, for the PPP, okay? So these are our sources, all right? So if you own an S corporation and you get wages from an S corp, this doesn't apply to you. If you get distributions, from an S Corp, this does not apply. If you own a partnership and you get distributions, this does not apply. So what this applies to is only those that do not file a separate return, meaning they just file their Form 1040 with this information on it. So what I've done here is I'm gonna go down the list so if you file a Schedule C with your Form 1040, okay, this is the Schedule C form, and you'll notice at the top it says profit and loss. Profit and loss uh, from business. And there's that Schedule C. Okay, this, so this is, where, this is where a sole proprietor, a self-employed, and an independent contractor is going to record their income. Okay, and if you're a statutory employee, uh, this is where you would record your income as well. So you get a W-2, but if you're a statutory employee, your income comes here. Now, what would be great is if we got some clarity and they said, hey, just bring us your Schedule C and we'll go with your gross receipts, right? Like right here, boom, we'll just give you what, you, what your gross was, okay? And when you read the law, it's like, well, maybe that's that, okay? What's logical though, okay, is line, this is the Schedule C. What's logical though is line 31, okay, which is the net profit or loss. So the difference would be obviously, right? You brought in all your money, but then you have all these expenses and then what's your net? So why am, I, why am I talking about Schedule C? What we don't know is, when we're trying to figure out this starting number, okay, how do I know how much I can get in a PPP? Well, I gotta know, I gotta know the first number here, like what's the income? Because for businesses that have payroll, that's their starting number. Well, you know, if you're an independent contractor, sole proprietor, or a self-employed individual, you don't have wages that you're paying, right? Okay. So is it on a Schedule C, this one? That'd be great, okay? Or is the starting number the net? So that's what, that's what we, just, we just don't know on Schedule C. Is it based on this or is it based on this? So what I told my client is, you know what? Let's not wait around anymore. Let's just take in, let's take in what you got, this banker that I'm working with, He's gonna interpret it to your best interest. Um, and we know that the SBA has to be giving us some standards at some point, but it's gonna be either or on the Schedule C. Now, real quick, just to give you some info here. So this is the 1099 miscellaneous that you would receive, and this would be something that you would take in to the bank, right? So if you have a Schedule C, Take that to the 
take that to the bank, okay? And then if you get 1099s, you'll take this as well, okay? So this is a 1099 miscellaneous, okay? And then it's box seven here, okay, box seven. I'm just doing this all for free, so I'm sorry that it may seem unprofessional, unprofessional. But anyway, so we have box seven, uh, non-employee compensation. So if you received this, that's a golden ticket to get a PPP, okay? But is it just, is it based on this? Like, hey, I got this for 31 grand and that's your starting number? Because you probably know where I'm going with this, but when you get a 1099, where it actually typically and uh, most of the time gets reported is on this Schedule C. So this 1099, in essence, would be your starting number. So if you take your Schedule C in and you take in your 1099, hopefully you've got a bank, and I'm sure they're gonna try to give you the most that you can, but you have now two documents to take to them if you have these right here. Now, I also printed out, uh, it's dark, as you can tell, and I've got these bright lights and, and they're, they're making me warm. Got like a homemade studio, okay. So this right here is the form 1099K, okay? And the only, the only way you're gonna get this form is if you collect credit card payments from your customers. So if you collect cre uh, credit cards, you are going to get one of these from the company that runs your credit cards, right? So client comes in, they owe you $10, they swipe their card, you get the money, right? So the company that's that's taking that money from the credit card company and giving it to you, that's the company that's gonna send you this. And this is just laying it out for all the months, okay? There's no magic to that other than it would be the total of all that, okay? And if you're a sole proprietor, okay? Or self-employed, okay? It's the same thing. That 1099K figure would just go to line one, okay? That 1099K would just go to line one, just like that 1099 miscellaneous. So then the question is, okay? I held up Schedule F. This is the Schedule C, but they're the same in the sense of the income. So real quick, on Schedule F, okay, Schedule F, this would be uh, farming business, ranch business, right? Schedule F. And then it's, it's, it's really the same as the Schedule C. So here's the gross income, and then here's the net profit. So the question for a PPP is, well, do I use this number as my starting number or the net number as my starting number, okay? And the 1099s would get reported in here if you have a farming business. So if don't wait around, I mean, let's not wait around for the, for someone to finally interpret, just get into the bank. You can go to that. Uh, you don't have to even go to my website. You can find the PPP form, um, you know, a fill in, just make sure at the top, it says paycheck protection program. But I, I mean, I'm just saying I have it on this website, jjthecpahelp.com. Take what you got. Okay. And then if I knew, you know, you're not, you're not doing anything wrong, but if, but if I'm you for starters, the number I would put and the, the number I'm going to have my client put is what's reported on the 1099. Okay. Which is also what's reported on line one. Okay. So we're going to go with that because when you read the law, it sounds like it can be that. Okay. Now there's something in there that says the net, but we're going to start out the application with here's the 1099s that this client got and here's the Schedule C that these 1099s would be reported in, okay? And in fact, this client also has a 1099K that gets reported on here. So they get 1099s and they get 1099Ks. All of that goes into Schedule C. And that top line is the bigger line because that's before any expenses, right? Schedule F, same thing. If, if, if I had a client with a Schedule F, 
I just go and do the application based on the top line. And the reason I'm saying that is it's the better number. We have no other guidance. And here's the thing. I mean, the bank's going to know how you came up with your number. It's not like you're putting in, you know, you're not pulling the wool over their eyes, but you need to have the documentation. And on that PPP app, that would be your starting number when we're talking here on April 1st. Starting number being what's on, what's your gross on Schedule C? What's your gross on Schedule F? Okay, that'd be your starting number. You know, what's the, what's the total of your 1099s, which should be the same as what's on your Schedule C? Now your Schedule C or F may have more income because you may have not gotten 1099s from everybody, right? But it's at least that on your Schedule C, Schedule F. So total 1099s, your gross figures, okay? Divided by 12 times 2.5, and you have a PPP loan. Now, here's the one zero guidance on is how do you get it for how do you get it forgiven? Uh, I had somebody <coughs> and it was an, it was a good comment, but it's a little it was funny. We both were laughing. It's like, well, how do you how do you show that you used it? You know, do you just write a check to yourself? Because as a sole proprietor, you don't have a separate anything. So I don't know how the loan forgiveness part works. Right now, we're probably just like, well, let's just get the money. So if I'm you, get that PPP app, fill it out. It's super simple. Your name, your address, your contact info, and then it's going to say, hey, what's your payroll cost? And for you as a self-employed independent contractor or sole proprietor, your payroll cost would be, here's my annual amount divided by 12. Okay? Because what it asks for is what's your average monthly payroll cost. And in the law, they define payroll costs for self-employed individuals as your income. They just didn't say if it's net or if it's gross. So on that PPP, the annual divided by 12 is that figure that I, you put in. And then you'll see on the application that you take that times 2.5, okay, to get to then the loan amount. And then the rest is just questions. I mean, it's, it's two dollar amount of figures and then the rest is questions you know so answer all the questions certify it on the back bring in your schedule c bring in your 1099s if you have a schedule f you know just bring it in and if you're paying for your own health insurance bring that in if you're paying your own retirement bring that in you know whatever documents you can get right now because we're at 23 minutes, um, I'm going to turn this into a part two. So we talked about self-employed, independent contractor, sole proprietor, and we talked in this one about unemployment benefits and the PPP. So stay tuned. And at the end of this, there'll be a card or a link, if you will, to go to this next video, which will be the self-employed um, and how they get to take it, how you guys get to take advantage of the EIDL. So I'll probably call it EIDL for the self-employed. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe and then don't you ever forget you've never met a CPA quite like me.